Welcome to the Horror Unmasked podcast, where we unmask the monsters and explore, explore the lore. lore. I'm Amber. And I'm Lily. And today will be our official session two. Yay! <laughs> Don't you just love these little chit chat episodes? Yeah. I know yeah. I do. Yeah. I love hearing myself talk. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes I think my voice sounds disgusting, but that's okay. It's so funny because every time I'm editing, I'm always like, ugh, when I hear myself. No. I'm like, ugh. No. Gah. No. <laughs> Never. I'm like, I could have been more succinct. What am I doing? Jesus. Uh, Yeah. So today we will be talking about some shows and stuff uh mainly all of these you can find on netflix yeah netflix shows yes netflix shows it's kind of sad because netflix used to be my favorite platform but now it's i'd have to say it's hbo oof yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) i mean shit there's only so much that we can do it's true um I don't know, just HBO has a lot of my favorites on there. Mm. So, that's the only reason. It's still got a lot of good things, which we were about to yeah, talk about. Yeah, yeah. There's some decent stuff that's come out, um, and that have been out for a while. Netflix, sponsor us. <laughs> I don't think they're going to sponsor us ever. You just <laughs> told them that you've abandoned them. Well, here's them. the thing. If they sponsor me, maybe I'll, I'll change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Ugh. Oh, my God. (laughs) So, kind of obviously, we have a bit of a theme in some of the stuff that we'll be talking about, specifically the people who make the shows. Right. Um, Obviously, Hill House, Bly Manor. Hill House and Bly Manor! Probably some of, in my opinion, the most well-made miniseries, like, horror-type miniseries. Yeah, they're very good. They're very, very good. It was it's kind of funny, touching on um, Halloween Horror Nights. The first time I oh, ever yeah. went, they had the Hill House Hill House house. house yeah. And I was like, I don't know what any of this is, <laughs> but I still went through it. And now I have context, and it's almost that retroactive, like, God damn it, I wish I would have... Seen it beforehand. So that I would, like, get all yeah. of the references and shit, but... Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? I loved that it was a house so much. That was one of the most epic scares I've ever had <laughs> in my life. And if you know what I'm talking about, if you went to that house, it was obviously the tall guy in the top hat scared me shitless i literally ran down the hallway away from him screaming fuck no over and over and over again yeah um i'm pretty sure i irritated a lot of people in line that day but i thought my life was over so (laughs) well see when i went into that house for me it was the um pitch dark corridor with like a heart thumping and like Uh, weird whisper creeps yeah oh yeah that one got that got me yeah that was definitely the dark intrusive it feels too close mentality, mm-hmm. even though it was definitely just a pitch black open space. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention you had never seen the show before. So yeah. So it was like, oh. I had no context. Right. Granted, now that I've seen the show, the shows are beautifully shot. Beautiful. But with very different focuses mm-hmm. between the two. Yes. One is definitely more scary than the other. What would you say? Oh, Hill House is definitely scarier than Bly. Yeah. I would say Bly Bly is more more, an emotional It's so emotional. It's so sad. It's like, oh my gosh. I mean, there is a jump scare at the end. Oh yeah. It really got me. It's got (laughs) scares. A hundred percent. But definitely comparatively, like both stories are really good. Yeah. But I feel like Bly Manor is more story heavy. Yeah. Comparatively. Definitely. And focuses like the emotions are a bit more intense. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I just I think Hill House is so beautifully done. All mm-hmm. of the camera shots, the set design, the set design. God, the oh sets are beautiful. I love the decrepit. It's so pretty. I could talk for hours about this show. Like, <laughs> obviously. But I will say I the can. funniest effing thing. What? Is the limping. 
the limping. I can't. The- <laughs> it just looks so silly. When the, at the beginning, right? Yes, like one the, of the first literally scenes. Literally one like, of the first couple of scenes. When the that you mom see, is like coming limping at. It's just the family. Yeah. It's a little. It's a little funny. It's yeah. a little out of it. Yeah. But. And, Everything else beside that, though. Yeah. If you can get past that, I definitely can. Cause oh yeah. Victoria Pedretti and Kate Siegel. Oh my God, I love them so much. Yeah, yeah. They're so good. And the whole concept, honestly, it's fascinating. The whole concept of the bent like the bent yes. neck lady character. That was one of I don't know if anybody else, like. For me, that was definitely a big shocker. I know some people it's probably a, picked it up it's really, beforehand. No. But. I didn't. And that's like, I'm pretty good when it comes to story yeah. beats. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's a fascinating concept. Right. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Super spoilers. Obviously, uh, in case you haven't seen any of these shows, there will be spoilers. Yeah. Um, but basically. Just the idea of it being herself. How Nelly was her own nightmare. But like, but like, she was her own nightmare from her from a young from age, childhood. Yeah, yeah. Fucking fascinating. Yep. Yeah. Fucking it's fascinating. So, it's heartbreaking, though. It's heartbreaking. Like her story is terrifying. heartbreaking. Like, oh, I love her love her little love story between her and her sleep therapist. Yeah. You know, and then they he like helps her through it, and it's yes. so sweet. But then, am I crazy to oof. say that I feel like the one sibling that maybe might have gotten away more safe off this is fucked up but the brother really oh wait which one her twin or how kind of not exactly i don't know i think it was the other brother you think it was the other brother definitely yeah i feel like it's just he didn't get it at all true but like of all the scares that he could have gotten all he got was like the the hat dude true like of all of the possibilities of like fear and terrors like, it was the hat dude. Yeah, but the other brother had nothing. Oh, true. I know. Didn't even have a... Yeah. A ghost. Steven, that's his name. Steven. He yeah. didn't have a ghost at all. Like, he just went through life being like, yeah, my family has mental illness. <laughs> well, maybe, but... Uh, uh, also, that also, house is house alive and wants to eat you. Yeah. Basically, Haunting of Hill House, it's about a family that moves into this ginormous mm-hmm. mansion mm-hmm. that is haunted and it fucks with them into adulthood every single one of them yeah um, yeah it follows them yes so. and you just you watch how that transforms the family and brings them together yeah. and tears them apart and and the first one to fall is the mom yeah the mom's the very first person to be afflicted and to be affected mm-hmm. and stay affected yeah and the la- i would say that the last person to be affected by it is the dad the very last person to have the final pull well, yeah. situation happen yeah. is the dad mm-hmm. which is also sad that whole scene was sad that was so sad that was sad just the idea that they walked past and it's just I know. you like there there's nothing you can do now yeah because he's just yeah he's just trapped there now but he like gave it up on, he gave up his life on purpose mm-hmm so that his kids could, could get away. Yeah. Because that fucking room. Yeah. The stomach. The red room. The room. Red room. Red room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different franchise, but yeah, totally same different. concept. I think one of my favorite episodes is actually, again, spoiler alert, this, we literally just talked about it, but Nellie, you know, yeah, her funeral. Nellie. Yeah. Like that whole episode, like, which episode, I think it's episode five. I could be wrong, but it's all done in one take. Like, it's a... 20 30 minute scene yeah done in one take and it's beautiful it's and i love well it done and it took me a good while into the scene to realize that they had no cut scene <laughs> yeah yeah but the way it transitioned Just the camera yeah. movements mm-hmm. was succinct it's so pretty and so well done yeah and if you haven't watched it what are you doing with your life yeah it's, it's been really out for beautiful like five years now go ahead it's beautiful to look at it's a fascinating story it's definitely got the creep factor yeah so if you were trying to figure out like i don't want to be scared but i want to be introduced into the whole concept of the shows i would definitely say maybe start bly but then transition to hill yeah because i feel like hills a little bit got a bit more jump scary nature to it than the than bly bly's got a lot of stuff that's like in the back yeah like you'd have to have looked behind the characters and honestly this and off to the corner yeah but honestly, the scares don't really, really happen until, like, the end, yeah. I would say. Also, like, I'm all for Bly. I'm all for Bly. Bly's, Bly's good. LGBT. Representation. Yes. Yes. Woo! 
We love it. Yeah, yeah. Gay romance. Also gay sadness. Yeah. Very gay sadness. <laughs> very, very sad. Yeah. It's tragic. Also just the whole God, the nanny. Oh, yeah. And the cook. And the cook. And just, you just wanted that to just- You ju- wanted it to happen so bad. Also, that's fucked up that the bitch got there, that she got there to start her job mm-hmm. the second she died. Yes. Fuck the second up. the nanny died is when Danny got there. Yeah. So that's crazy. I yeah. stand Jamie and Danny forever and I stand Owen and the nanny yeah. forever. I like I I like Raul. Mm-hmm. He's I I like Yeah, he's him. good. He's, he's good. good. He's really good. And he's also in one of the other yeah, ones that we're going to talk about. Which one? Uh, uh, Midnight, Midnight Mass. Mass. Yeah. Right. And even in Midnight Mass that was sad. Yeah. His death and everything and all that kind of stuff. And that is sad as shit. Remind me of his death. It's been a while. So kind of jumping into, we're kind of going all over the place, but <laughs> Midnight Mass is from the same people. Well, they're all kind of connected. They all use the same actors and things Yeah, like they that. use similar actors, of the... but it's also the production, the production team. Yes. Is the same. Mike Flanagan is a big part of that. Yeah. Props to him. Love that guy. So the whole kind of concept of Midnight Mass is it's this town of people. It's very cult. Very cult-like. It's demon cult kind of concept. Mm Mm-hmm. All on one separate island away from everything. Because a family... Crockett Island. Yes. That's what it's called. And it is sad and fucked up because doesn't the family move back like a family moves in in midnight mass uh apparently like they get a new priest it's that comes in oh yeah yeah yeah. father paul hill new priest to replace the previous one yeah oh my god i'm remembering it now yes yes oh wow it's a gothic supernatural horror and he killed the other priest right yes he actually yes yes murdered him brutally yes it has like twisted a twisted vampire mentality kind of in it it's because once the town gets like not re-inhabited but the people already live there but i believe a young man returns to his isolated hometown on crockett island yes and he wants to rebuild his life because he murdered because he was in prison prison. for killing someone yeah in a in a drunk driving accident yes and he also arrived at the same time as the priest the new priest showed up yep. and because he was wanting to like revitalize the town. No. Oh my God. He did not kill the priest. Who did he kill? Oh. He is the fucking priest. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's right. He is, he is, he the, is priest. the priest. Because, because you see him old and then he aged like he. But the only reason why we know that he is yep. the same priest is because someone in the town who mm-hmm. came to come visit him. It was really old. They and, stayed yeah. in the. He was staying in the same room as the original priest and when the visitor came over it was uh, i can't remember her name Mm -hmm. but she looked at a picture yep i was like wow and it was this it's the same yeah so he just you know yeah became young Mm -hmm. he became young again so it's definitely like i said had the vampire and they had he had a daughter with one of the people yes with the um trying to remember annabeth no wait uh sarah gunning was the doctor it was her mom mildred gunning yeah sarah's aging mother who had dementia yeah she was really old had dementia yeah when the priest like healed her or whatever you could see her go back to being really young yes yep and then they had that moment where they were like yeah our daughter sarah yeah also can we talk about bev do you remember her bev that bit oh bev bev (coughs) that's all i gotta say she mm. Mm -mm -mm. let's just say she was a menace to society Um, she's the one i believe she's the one who found out that he was the one yes who was she's the one who yes like when he killed that guy and was like it's okay oh yeah she she stood up but she also is the same person who saw the picture (laughs) yeah she's she basically chose to defend him yes and then build a following of weird yeah uncontrolled vampire beings who could only survive at night <laughs> yeah at all yeah and went on a bloody rampage daylight killed them because a creepy demonic vampire thing mm-hmm. came to inhabit the town yeah because the priest the old priest found a cave 
that had an idol. Yes. And that's yes. what, and then found him and got changed. Brought it to him, yeah. And brought it back. Oh my God, I'm remembering that him. one scene with the guy, the, who killed, like, uh, his name is Riley, the guy who was in prison. Yes. He, like, found him and then yes. the thing killed him. Yes. Right? Yes. And then he became that thing. Yes. And then he had to show his bestie. Oh, that was so sad. Yes. He had to show his, his bestie, his childhood friend, Aaron. I, yeah, I have all the character names here. He had to show his bestie Aaron that like the town had been and then took her out onto a boat and like yes. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Cause he wanted to save her. That was rough. I don't remember. Did she survive? She was um I don't think she did. No, because she got bit. Mm. She was one of those people because right. she she was one of the very first ones yep. because he was slowly um he was putting blood yep. into the offerings because yep. she was originally oh, wheelchair bound. Oh, and then she wasn't pregnant anymore because it was reverting her back <clears throat> to oh yeah. That's so, sad. so the daughter wasn't became she was originally wheelchair bound and then she when the offering happened she was able to get up and walk because the priest yeah. was like get up yeah come to me mm -hmm. come walk to me and then she fucking stood up yeah but yeah the 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 sheriff oh uh, yeah Raul him Going and his him. son. Right. Are Islamic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they would pray, but then his son fell in with the church there yep. and was the very first person, right? I think he was the very first person that was given an the official offering I think so. to turn. And, you know, they were holding him back, holding the... Oh, God, it was such an intense scene because there was such agony. Yeah. Of his son mm -hmm. being turned. Oh, and they were all, like, trapped in the church mm -hmm. and, like... They were all trapped yeah. in the church because they, they wanted to control them until they could handle it. Yes. But unfortunately, um, that did not happen. Right. And instead, they all got the fuck out and killed everybody the fuck else. Yes. In conclusion, it's... A crazy effing miniseries. Oh yeah, it is. And the sad the the part with the sheriff and his son, they go to the beach to face yeah, Mecca yeah. and they pray. And the 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 um he was shot. Mm -hmm. He was dying. He was dying, and him and his son went to go pray. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that happened was you know that he fell over. He like yeah, fell he was over, on his died, knees and then like fell over. And his son turned to dust mm -hmm. as the morning rays. Fucking crazy. It was fucked up. Fucked up. Some crazy shit, man. But yeah, Mike Flanagan, man. He... Yeah. And it's... Also, good on him. He really pulled Kate Siegel. Yeah. And it's that some man. of the same people who, again, the connection between all of these is yeah. Midnight Mass. Midnight... Midnight, Midnight Club. Not Ma Midnight Club. We have Midnight Mass and then we have Midnight, Midnight Club. Club. You know, the Midnight's. Of this of the world, we have both hauntings and we have both, both midnights. midnights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this the uh, this one is about a bunch of kids who are sick who end up in mm -hmm. like a um and this is like terminal. They're yeah, terminal. terminal. Usually they're kids. mostly cancer yeah. or some level like that. Mm -hmm. And this is basically a stay here till you die. Yeah, it's a hospice. Yeah. And basically all these kids make a pact to meet up at midnight and mm -hmm. they tell... They go in the library. Yeah, they go in the library. Drink. Yep, they be drinking. And they tell, like every night, someone else gets to tell like a ghost story. Yes. And some of these stories are fucked up. Oh yeah, the ballerina one is intense. Which I think is also like a soft version. It's mm. is her telling also her own her story. Also, yeah. But twisting it into this other thing yeah anya she's the one that is the the wheelchair bound she's the one that did the the yeah ballerina story and but the the whole follow through to the whole show is that you're following this one girl ayanka it starts off like the very beginning of the show starts with you seeing her dye her hair red yeah and she's like getting ready to you know she's practicing her graduation speech and all this kind of shit but mm -hmm. then unfortunately the cancer hits yep and the next time you see her she's got no hair and she's going to this like hospice yeah and it follows her because she's she's hardcore in denial and there's definitely way later in the series there's rumors that someone isn't sick and that there was a misdiagnosis or that someone was going home she really and she thought it was, was her. so certain it was her so certain. Unfortunately, it was not. It was that bitch in the wheelchair from Midnight Mass. Yes, it was. It was the bitch in the wheelchair. <laughs> but not the same bitch in the wheelchair in this yes. one. Obviously. This bitch was a little bit more mean. Yeah. She was but mean. But I loved her. She was mean. Yeah. But I loved her. And also delusional. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, their whole premise of the Midnight Club was also like, if any of them had died, 
it was like their responsibility to reach out yes to them to to let them know what was in the afterlife what was in the afterlife what was beyond um and there's definitely hints of the possibility happening it's a really good Uh uh-huh it's a really good show it's definitely it it makes you think about life which is unfortunate it really does it really does because if i think about it too long i freak out as we know yeah (laughs) (laughs) but basically um my uncle hears of this one girl back in yes how long ago oh. i don't know but um yeah she heard about one girl who had been in the hospice a really julia long time jane. ago julia jane who had who was cured yeah she was magically cured I was magically cured and they found out that she was also a part of the midnight society there was yes. a big group it was like a book of names that mm-hmm. had all sorts of names from the different previous midnight societies yes and basically midnight clubs. what's wild is that our lovely Ianka, She's she basically resorts to trying every possible fucking remedy that exists. And she even goes out because she researched in the area that there was like a fountain of youth or, you know, health spring water. So yeah. she went out to go get it and met this lady. And I guess she owned a... She owns like a... We're a bunch of people, like a commune. Yeah. Where there were like, we all like eat healthy and, you know, we praise the earth and all that kind of shit and like if you ever want to hang out like oh you live over there oh they've got great stuff you know blah 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 healing healing stuff and Ayanka's like yeah yeah hell yeah (laughs) and she becomes kind of like a confidant yeah she treats her like a confidant which Mm -hmm. is fucking unfortunate very unfortunate because it turns out bitch is Julia Jane (laughs) bitch is Julia Jane and just was trying to use her yes because in reality what happened to julia jane is she sacrificed a fuck ton of people in order to cure herself. in order to cure herself so she was trying yeah to do it again and here's the fucking problem with that is that she tricked ayanka into thinking that they could do it too and she taught yeah. them a ritual and they were trying to save anya because anya was going yeah bad and it didn't fucking work it didn't work because she didn't they she didn't tell them the proper ritual yep. which I mean, in reality, it wasn't, they sure shit was not going to kill anybody, no. but you, it's messed up and sad. Very sad. Because she breaks in, uh, 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 the Julia Jane character yeah, breaks, she breaks in into the hospice to try and... And goes to this underground basement thing where like this, what like do you call it? It was, like a, it was like a, where cult meetings are held, yeah. basically. Chamber, like an antechamber yeah. kind of thing. Very creepy. Yeah. Dark. Horrible. And she tried to reenact it, but yeah. failed. Failed. Miserably. Yeah. Um, luckily, definitely people intense. survived, I think. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people survived. It's just unfortunate in the nature of like what happened. Right. Yeah. That's the Midnight Club. It's really cool because you get to see multiple different stories throughout. Yeah. Put and it's together consistent one characters. Big story. Yeah. So you're kind of, characters. it's consistent uh, actors mm-hmm. being used throughout it, mm-hmm. which is pretty fascinating. Um, so it's different stories. And it also shows the range that the different char- different actors can yeah. portray. Which I love. I love that. Oh my God. The guy who plays Kevin. Yes. Yeah. Being the murderer in that one story. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, Hell yeah. So scary. Hell if yeah. If you watch it, you'll know. And what the we're fact that he just kept fucking being like, and we'll learn about it next time. Yeah. Like this motherfucker. Yeah. Kept trying to pull shit. Uh, Ooh. The next one we got to talk about is the Guillermo. Guillermo del Toro. Cabinet of Curiosities. God. Now, that show is mind blowing. So. Every episode is a different story. Every single episode. Every single one of them. And they're all real messed up. Real levels of messed up. But I definitely would have to say, we actually, while we were watching it, had to take a, a pause. From which one? Uh, I'm going to guess the um, oh, the I, outside. Nope, nope. It was not the outside. It was Pickman's model. Was it? Really? We had watched. So the third episode is called The Autopsy. The fourth is The Outside. And the fifth is Pickman's model. By the fifth one, we were so grossed out oh, that my we God, could yeah. not... We had to take a break so that we could breathe and regain our constitution. You're so right. Because I just, those three I just, in a row. I just read a synopsis of that one. And yep. it, the last uh, sentence is, she gouged out her eyes and butchered and cooked their son. Yep. 
as depicted in one of Pikmin's paintings. Yep. I remember now. You I remember trauma now. blocked that shit. Yeah. That was awful. It's fucking gross. It's fucking gross. It's gross. It's beautifully made. Yeah. But it's gross. Nasty. It's all because so that Pikmin episode 100% is probably I would say the goriest of all of them. Yeah. Um why they put the two grossest ones right next to each other? Though? They put the three gross they put like weird alien inhabitation oh that's corpse right body. yeah then the they did the outside and the creepy gloop monster yeah gloop monsters best I'm way for gloop. me to explain it gloop. like you're right gloop. gloop beauty monster because it made yeah. them beautiful yes but also she murdered her husband and stepped and stuffed him like a fucking prized pig yeah you know to and and made him pretty and had him sit there. it's creepy it's creepy um but yeah pikmin's definitely put us over the edge because mm-hmm. it's basically that this guy he meets this painter and he sees his work he's like um a gallery owner he like deals with galleries and yep. like getting art for them and he meets this guy pikmin and he looks at this he looks at his work and he thinks it's pretty intense but it's good um and then he goes to go over to this guy's house to see his work and pikmin shows him the painting Mm -hmm. of the feast yeah but it's like when you see it it's moving yeah and it's like like it's alive like it's alive and it's it's the start of the downfall for that episode Mm -hmm. yeah it's chaotic i would have to say that the weirdest episode in that one is the seventh one and that's the viewing a hundred percent that's where the weird 70s psychedelic trippy shit oh my god with the alien that thing? was this i totally forgot you're so right that was a that very was the strange fucking episode. weird one like a bunch of people come over they're all doing a bunch of they're drugs. at this like really rich guy's house yeah. and he's like this super secluded mm-hmm. and they're all different people from different kind of walks of life yeah and they're all there to see something crazy yeah and then they accidentally you know bring the thing to life mm-hmm somehow with weed smoke with weed smoke with weed smoke (laughs) and it kills them all yeah it melts the main man yeah it melts the main guy who invited them all there it's crazy it's a lot yeah it's definitely got like that 70s psychedelic vibe Mm -hmm. i don't know but every single episode episode is crazy it's crazy and it's all different and (laughs) don't even get me started (laughs) this was just funny the dreams in the witch house yes with um yes rupert (laughs) grant yes which they literally just took him from harry potter and dropped him right back into here harry potter yeah yeah he he took him from harry Harry potter Potter to harry Harry potter Potter. just like a different version of it yes a fucking witch he had a wand in his hand at one point he literally had a a a fucking wand in his hand and i'm just like you (laughs) motherfuckers no literally you're just you just ronned him in another world yeah except here he has a twin sister right twin no not twin not twin she's just younger yes so it was like Like a younger sister it was like yes. Jenny Weasley. A young sister. Uh, yeah. Mm. And witches. Yeah. It's you like know. if older Ronald Weasley. Got into a really fucked up situation. Got into a really fucked up situation. If he was an auror and got into a really fucked up situation. Yeah. Yes. 100%. Um, so if you love Harry Potter. Yeah. Just watch this whole series. Oh, yeah. Eventually you'll get to that episode. Yeah. You'll go through a lot of fucked up shit first. Um, yeah, because the first couple of episodes are a little bit more unassuming. Yes. The first couple, like Lot 36 and Graveyard Rats. Really? Uh, they they, they kind of set you up to be like scary stories to tell in the dark kind of yes, feel. Yeah. Like Lot 36. It's it not, was okay. It's not creepy until like the, you go the, into the actual. Yeah. Once you realize like what that's all about. Yes. And then the graveyard rats. It's mm-hmm. giant mutated rats. Underground. Yeah. In the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. That steal. That steals uh like jewels. Jewels and, and shit. Which is of fucking weird. But you know. Yeah. Like why do you need that? Oh, wait, just kidding. It was the thing underground. It was the thing under the ground that they were, yeah. Yeah. They were giving offerings to, I guess. It was like cult Cthulhu, but like not. But like rat version. But like rat cult Cthulhu. (laughs) (laughs) It's rat Thulu. It's rat Thulu. Thulu. Careful, he might come after you. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Um, Oh, yeah. yeah, Definitely the first to build you up to then go to the autopsy, which was basically your a mortician. It's a the dude's a mortician. They bring a body in. He goes, he starts to record his session of information 
and then a fucking body reanimates itself because in reality it's a alien species that inhabited the body oh the third one yeah and then yes gets the 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 so mortician sad. to yeah. to basically die mm. and in weirdly enough the the other dead man's whose body is inhabited by the thing in the last moments of his human humanity as the creature is trying to crawl over and to get inside of the mortician mm-hmm. he hands him the fucking scalpel yep. because the the creature is blind and deaf yeah and it needs a, it needs a host, like a host to be able to, be to, able to exist and see, and see. And so he cuts his own artery yeah. blinds himself and makes him deaf makes yeah. himself deaf mm-hmm. and writes on his chest to burn his body yeah. and to listen to the the audio because the audio had been recording, recording the whole everything. time because he was trying to like obviously do the autopsy yeah. and like make notes and stuff so yeah. the recording was just going but in reality it recorded the, the fucking whole creature's monologue yeah of like we're going to take over your so, planet yeah psych bitch your ass is burned you're dead thank gosh i think that's like one of the ones that maybe had a more satisfactory conclusion. I think so too. Because like the outside one is fucking Everything weird. Everything else has a fucking weird, weird ass ending. ending. Cause not even yeah, the outside. I mean, that's maybe the, the murmuring one. one. Maybe had an okay-ish kind of ending. What was the it's ending the one? Like? It's the it's the I know last which one, that one is, and it's the birds either. where they're hearing birds, but also she's hearing like their child. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. That's tough. But basically, the outside. <laughs> Oh, weird. The outside's Episode fucking four. creepy. So it's really weird. It's basically this woman who is not conventionally a, pretty. Yeah. Conventionally, conventionally pretty. Yeah. And she's friends with a bunch of conventionally beautiful people who all tote this weird goo that they put on there. They're like, it makes me beautiful. Yeah. And all this shit. And right. They give and it to so her as a present. Right. They do. They give it to her as a present. And she starts using it. And basically... Like, her face is burning. It looks like it's burning. rashed and all She's that shit. She's constantly, like, burning her face and, like, it's bad. And the TV is talking to her. Yeah, the TV's talking to her. <laughs> the ad specifically for the gloop is talking to her. Yes. The, like, infomercial thing. Uh-huh. Her um, husband is desperately... It's called Glow. Yes. Hello her, Glow. Her husband is desperately being like, but I love you for who I you are. I love you for who you are. You don't ever need to change. Most supportive husband in the world. And I stand him so hard, like... He did not she deserve did not, to die. She did not deserve him. And no. he did not deserve that. Yeah. Um she basically she had she was a unconventionally beautiful individual who also had a quote quote yeah. strange hobby. Also, yeah, she did taxidermy. She, she did taxidermy, and so everybody thought that was weird. So when she finally, you know, looked beautiful and killed her husband and made him into a taxidermy statue. Made him into a taxidermy statue. Um, and then goes to work like it's normal and everybody's fawning over Oh, she's, her. Now beautiful she's now beautiful and sexy, but yes. she still does taxidermy. Yeah, weirdo. <laughs> she's a 10, but she does taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> still a 10 in her husband's book. Yeah. Did not deserve yes. her at all. But yeah. Um, she was a four and did taxidermy and he still loved her. Yeah. Conventionally. Conventionally. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. And those are all those are all their own separate stories. So yeah. you don't have to worry about like shit. If you wanted to, you could watch them out of order and it would be fine. Like if you were like, I want to watch these specific ones because I like the way they sound, yeah. then watch them. But you'll probably want to end up watching all of them anyway. Ooh. Which one do you want to talk about next? Um, mom, 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 mom. I feel like we've gone in depth over Midnight Mass, Midnight Club, and now Cabinet of Curiosities. Do we? I've got Wednesday Slasher Irregulars archive 81 and half bad the bastard son and the devil himself these the are only ones one that i've, I've seen is wednesday so we can talk about wednesday next wednesday i love this show i love wednesday this show is very good i've seen it a few times <laughs> a few times <laughs> a few times um because you know me when i like something i watch it a you lot go ham. i go ham um i mean it's I really stop. good it is really good it's... i love this alternative telling of the Atoms yeah. family from the view of Wednesday. 1000%. And a lot of people didn't like it. Which is like shocking. I know a lot because it didn't like represent the original Bullshit. what it was. And I was like, okay, but it's something new. It's something new. It's modern. And it's, it's modern. It's a different telling of the same don't. We story. know the Adams family. Yes. We don't need another Adams family. No. But this is a fascinating alternative view on the Adams family. And don't you fucking tell me Morticia's a goddamn beauty, and oh, I love her. A queen. She's a sassy queen. 
of pure grace and beauty and i love her yes and, and it's fantastic also jenna ortega did a yes. beautiful job as wednesday she did a fantastic job as wednesday i she really liked her it. i really did too like oh my gosh hint hint i love her because she's also in she's in so the much. new scream, scream. films she's and also- she's gonna be the new fucking she's gonna be the daughter of our sweet yes, lydia Dietz. lydia and beetlejuice mm-hmm. which beetlejuice if you didn't too. know there's gonna be a beetlejuice too and Jenna Ortega is going to be Lydia's daughter, yep, played yep. by the original yeah. Winona Ryder, which you know we love her here. You so know it's going to be here. exciting when that one comes out. So exciting! But yeah, man, these this show's really good. I liked the dynamic between Enid and Wednesday. I lot. love their dynamic. I love their so friendship so much. She's uh, definitely the in Japanese terms we it would be referred to as um a sundere, where she's very much like i don't like you i don't like you yeah. but in reality like no you're no, like my best friend her. and i love you <laughs> yeah like it's definitely yin and yang yeah night and day colorful black and white yes and they just complete each other their hug their hug oh so sad and so sweet yeah because um wednesday did not hug enid at all no through the entire series even though technically you would quantify them as like best friends yeah they were best friends. hundred percent. hundred percent. Like, even though they had that, you know, little tiff. Uh, yeah. In the, in, in oh, between. But um, yeah, that end hug was, is palpable. It's so, yeah. Yeah. When Wednesday just kind of gives in, it's like, yeah. Because it's also, it's not even just necessarily that Wednesday gives in. It's that Enid goes in for a hug, but backs up. Respects, yeah. tries to respect her boundaries. Yeah, yeah. And Wednesday reaches out yeah. and pulls her into a hug. Yeah. Like, that's fucking character growth yes. if I've ever seen any. Oh, as yeah. beautiful. It's so sweet. Catherine Zeta-Jones, the beauty of Morticia. Yeah. I also just loved the interaction between Morticia and Wednesday. And the idea of, like, mm-hmm. there's a reason why Wednesday is the way she is and why Morticia is the way she is. Is the dove and the raven. Yeah. It's the different ways in which the families... And their powers And work. their powers work. Yeah. So she's... So Morticia's a dove because she... Has has more pleasant powers, pleasant ways of uh, of doing things. Whereas Wednesday is a raven because hers is a little bit darker. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, also, I love the fact that like you could see the care that Wednesday has for Pugsley. Yeah, and the way she um shows that care into yes. um oh, what's his name the B guy yes our B boy our B boy Eugene. Yes, Eugene, Eugene. Uh, who keeps bees. Who keeps bees? He keeps bees because his powers is bees. His powers is effing bees. He's literally a queen that. bee. He is literally is a queen bee. Yeah, I love it. Yes, yeah, I love it. Oh, it's so sweet. Also, the fact that Christina Ricci, original. Yes. Wednesday. Well, original. You know, you yeah. Know I mean. Yeah. Count comes back and is the freaking villain. Yes. I love that. I do love that. I think that's really fun that she reprised for a role essentially but not exactly yeah and the nature of the hide is fascinating yes because it's it's weird that so it's a Jekyll and Hyde creature essentially is what it is it's it's what it's inspired by Mm -hmm. is the Jekyll and Hyde the idea that you're one thing during the day and at night or whatever you transform into this creature it's two personalities in one body but for the show, it's that the hides don't know their hides until someone reveals it to them. Mm-hmm. Because he had been through, because it was his mom. His mom was a hide, and it was genetic. Yeah, and his dad didn't want to. And there's a loyalty thing with the hides that the person who reveals it to them, they become loyal to. Yeah, so which is fascinating. So Tyler became loyal to Thornhill. Yeah, um, and what's oh God. And it's so sad. You know, our poor painter boy. You're thinking of Xavier Thorpe, the guy yes. that Wednesday knew when they were little. Man, I'm sorry, but yes. people, people, Peeper. Peeper. <laughs> people who say that Tyler was supposed to be Endgame, you're wrong. You're wrong. What do you mean Tyler's supposed to be Endgame? Like, everybody was like, oh my God, Tyler and Wednesday, yes. And I was always like, no. I could see that they were, that the show was trying to build Tyler and Wednesday. I hated it. I wanted it to be Xavier and Wednesday because clearly they had a better bond. And the way he like, oh my God, I'm sorry. People thought this was creepy, but uh, if any man painted me and then like made that painting come to life to show me how beautiful that my music is and then yes. we spoke about that i would fold. yes i would fold i would fold so fast right there um right then and there also magic the fuck that's right 
at the same time, you're going to go after a normie boy? <laughs> you shitting me? Wow. Right. Well, a quote, 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 quote at the time no Nor- normal normie. boy yeah. until you act until I you mean, kiss him and find out he's a fucking yeah. monster who's I mean, trying to I kill you i do love that whole setup of like him bringing her on the boat and like setting up that whole like movie thing yes and watching the horror movie and yeah. it was freaking yeah. legally blonde i'm dead yeah um however i do think it's interesting that um jenna ortega is like she doesn't want there to be any love interest yeah at all like because it's not her. Wednesday. Yeah, it's not. It's not Wednesday. It's not. And I, 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 I kind of I kind of agree. Like, you can have the dude fawn over her all she wants, but... She doesn't have to fold. She doesn't have to fold for it. She doesn't have to fold like I would. No. Nope. That's okay. We're not the same. Nope. Nope. I'm definitely more of an Enid. Enid. I, oh, yeah. I'm an Enid. <laughs> I'm an Enid with Wednesday tendencies. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that, tells, what that says about me, but that's true. That's a fact. It is a fact. It's a real good I'm Enid show. with Wednesday style. Yes. And Enid personality, I like Wednesday style more. Yeah. Definitely. I'm just kind of a both in both boats a little bit. Yeah. But also, look, thing. <laughs> You're going to have to edit that later. Yeah, I will. I 100% will okay. have to edit down anyway, that Anyway, hold on. Pause. Thing. All right. So my parents knew how obsessed I was with this show like how much I watched it and so my dad being the lovely lovely man that he is for Christmas I had they got me a Wednesday Funko Pop yeah and then my dad 3d printed and like painted a small thing to go with it that's awesome and it it's the best thing I own and I will keep it forever and cherish it. And I love it. And maybe I'll post it on our Instagram and yeah. Twitter. <laughs> Just so you can look at it. I'll give it a little, I'll give it a little, um, a little photo shoot. Yeah. It's, it's as big as the Wednesday Funko Pop. But I think it gives a character. Because yeah. also you can put thing on her head and it works. Oh, yeah. It's weird. Like, it's, it's perfect. the same size as her, but it fits but, yeah, perfect. on her head. Yeah. I love it. I mean, uh, honestly, and the scene between her and Thing. Oh, heart fucking break. When you, because the whole time throughout the whole show, everybody is pissed at her for not showing emotion. Yep. And just in this isolated scene. Mm-hmm. When it's her and family. Her and family. Yeah. And she thinks he's going to, th- she thinks she that thinks thing, thing is, is going to die. die. Yeah. She cries. So heart wrenching. Oh, it is. It like she feels. broke me. In like true loss of a yeah. friend and partner, and when um when fucking Uncle Fester, yeah, Uncle, Fe- wait, what? Uncle Fester, yeah, when he um sorry, when he like is like no, there's nothing more I can do, and she's like again, again, yeah, again, again. do it again, yeah, demanding, demanding, like you need you to. have to help, and the way she blinks because she doesn't blink unless she's feeling emotion, yeah, in the whole thing, yeah, so there's only a few times that she actually does. It's really cool. Yeah. Jenna Ortega, so talented. Yeah. So talented. Girl, I blink every five seconds. I know, right? <laughs> every five seconds. That took a lot of power. Yes. But yeah, it's super good. If you, if you, like, honestly, shocker if you haven't seen it, but if you haven't seen it, really seriously, go watch it. Yes. Obviously, probably by now, you know the fucking dance. It's been dance, fucking dance, everywhere. Dance, dance, you know, there was dance, a while dance. that people thought that after um a, too much of it, they thought that Jenna did not enjoy the dance anymore i find that hard to believe because she like because there's a video of her like doing it like half-heartedly and so people were all like does she hate it does she hate us i was like no no it's just if you're (laughs) a human who sees a lot of yourself on the internet doing the same thing over Over and and over over again again. it's gonna drive me nuts a little maybe but that doesn't mean you're gonna hate it or hate the character that you're playing there'd be no reason to no yeah. Honestly, I would love that people resonated with that so much and appreciated the art and work oh, yeah. that I put into it. I, I love that whole dance scene. Her outfit, obviously iconic. Yeah, the dress is beautiful. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> um, Speaking of outfits, Gwendolyn Christie. I love that <laughs> woman. Please. A woman present, got range. You know, uh, Principal Weems. She does have range. Range. Game of Thrones. Range. Star Wars. Range. Wednesday. Range. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she said that this show... Oh, also, also, Sandman. Yes, yes. Range. 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 
Um, she's so she's in so much but she's so good and i love that in this she said that um she never felt more beautiful playing a role yeah because she looked stunning she was beautiful she yeah. looked stunning super uh, like full put is, together outfits on yes. it's amazing that is a woman yeah that's a woman that's a woman <laughs> oh my gosh i love the little interviews with jenna ortega and gwendolyn, gwendolyn christie because <laughs> it's like it's a funny kind of flirt obviously it's not yeah for real but yeah yeah the way jenna like dotes on gwendolyn and she's just like sitting there like blushing yeah oh my gosh yeah it's because so you have to think for like years she was playing this very masculine, masculine character char- yeah for years years and it's the idea of like f- being able to put on this like very regal feminine, feminine regal yes feel mm-hmm. yeah and crushed it i hate her ending although i, I don't think ending. she's gone personally yeah because i don't want to believe it but she has such a powerful ending too um, i suppose she did yeah it's the idea okay, that she, she finally did. believed she her. believed her and like tried to stand Went up for through her for it and, yeah and ended it's up just real fucking unfortunate herself. it is um although the ending did make it seem like she's not actually gone yeah personally yeah so hopefully yeah we get christy back because i love her yeah yeah go watch it oh yeah right now I All might of go these ones it. that we've suggested really, really should go watch. I might rewatch it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's real good. It is good. I want the second season to come out, but I don't know when that's going to happen. So let's see. Is there a... I'm going to look it up. You're going to look up when? Wednesday season two release date. Oh. Apparently prep for season two has started. No official production start date yet. That's all they know. Nice. That's all anyone knows. Well, at least it means that no matter what, we will get a second season. We will season. get a second season. We could be waiting until 2025, like so many yeah. things. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, whatever. That's fine. Yeah. You know what we won't run out of content for? Horror movies. Nope. <laughs> There's nope. a new one every month. Every month. Literally every month we are going to see something new. Yes. Woo! literally i can think of all the way we have a movie to watch every mm-hmm. month up to mm-hmm. we've already seen the 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 bookie man yeah and then our next one is talk to me it's gonna be exciting that. is the last voyage of the demeter mm-hmm. since iconically we did dracula, dracula i feel like it would make sense it does and then we've got the fucking nun <laughs> Uh, the nun oh too. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, is which coming comes out, out in, in my birth month. Yeah. I'm set of my birth month. Yeah. Which is exciting because yeah. we're going to go hard. We got to find we gotta find one for every month that we get to go watch and yes. check out. Yeah. And now, for the shows that I haven't watched. Yeah, you have not watched these. I guess the best way for me to start this, I'll start off light and easy mm-hmm. with the Irregulars. Okay. So, it is an alternative story for Sherlock Holmes oh. and Watson ah. because it's so there's always a group of kids that they refer to as the irregulars that they get information from and like send out to get information so this is based on it's called the irregulars because it's based on the kids you follow the kids and their stories and you get to meet Watson but no Sherlock so it's really interesting and so it's all about Watson yeah it's about Watson but it's all about the kids Watson comes in every once in a while, but it's mainly about the kids and their interactions and because it becomes paranormal real fucking fast because apparently the sister of our main character, so it's B and Jessica or Jesse that I would say are really our main characters, but B mainly is our main character. The two of them are sisters and Jesse has some sort of powers, something about her. And this ends up bringing in our lovely dear Watson, played by Royce Pearson. And it's definitely a really good series as a supernatural thriller kind of thing, because they have to now go through and try and feel like deal with all of these different creatures that they're coming across. And the only person who has the true power and potential to deal with it is her sister hmm. and there is a prince leopold who's a character okay in it who is a love interest of b but overall it's a really good show it ends up like revealing later that b and jesse's parents because the mom died when they were young and their dad 
guess who? Sherlock Holmes! Yep. Yeah. Saw that coming. Yeah. He saw Sherlock that coming Holmes. from a mile away. And the mom didn't die. Oh. She got sucked into a vortex. Oh. And Watson let it happen because Watson was in love with Sherlock. <gasps> Gay icon. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Even though Sherlock fell in love with the mother. The mom, yeah. And what a plot twist. It was real sad because the end of it, it was basically Watson having to let, like, they had to let the mother go mm -hmm. again because the giant rift opened because of all of the supernatural shit that was going on. And there was just a massive rift that was forming that was releasing all these things. And they had to close it. They had to close it. But the mom was coming through. Mm. And she had to be made to go back through. And unfortunately, Sherlock went with her. <gasps> wow. So. Who was? Yeah. Poor Watson. It was basically. And, and the only reason why it had to be that way was Sherlock was jumping into the portal to go with, to be with the love of his life. Yeah. And B was was accidentally being sucked in. So Watson had to make a choice. Who are you going to pull out? Right. And he saved B instead. And it was, you know, it's really intense. And it's the idea of like, honestly, it's if you love them, like the, the children are here. Yeah. And they can help. It was really, it's a really good show. And I like it oh, a lot. It's really interesting because I've never seen Sherlock. Out of all of the things that I've seen. Yeah. I've never felt that he would have a love interest. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. It was surprising. Did it work well? Yeah, they fucking loved each other okay. deeply. Like when the wife when the when the wife got pulled through, it was not on purpose. It was not like it was an accident. Mm -hmm. And it broke Sherlock. So it was definitely one of those things where it was like it was a they were in a truly loving relationship with each other. Hmm. So it's a really good show. That's intriguing. Should definitely see it like i said it's it's and it's newer it's was only 2021 release so it's newer mm. lots of fun i like that a lot more newer shows are having gay characters in it it's nice yeah. definitely representation so the next one that you haven't seen mm -hmm. is archive 81 okay now i it from the last that i know it definitely will be having uh, another season mm -hmm. from what i've heard but i'm not 100 percent. but it basically follows the story of a character named Dan. He's a he fixes old tapes, like old. Oh, I think I saw tapes. the first like episode, episode of it with you. Yeah, yeah, you did. And then did. I didn't finish it. He fixes up old tapes, and he gets a job to be out in the middle of the f nowhere mm -hmm. to fix up a shit ton of tapes for this huge CEO dude. Yeah, and he's told to be he's gonna be left there. No one's going to come check on him. He's just going to be left there to do his job. And then like people will bring, like food will be brought to him and all this kind of stuff. But yeah. that he will basically be out in the middle of nowhere by himself doing his job. Unfortunately, as he starts doing his job, he realizes that all of these are footages from a woman mm -hmm. and her name is Melody. And she's moving into quote quote she's doing she's like a reporter mm -hmm. or at least she's attempting to be in a reporter so she's moving into this hotel and she's trying to figure out some some shit about it and it gets real weird real fast because he starts while he's editing these he starts to see shit in his world that's been affected in hers mm -hmm. or things that are in hers like coming into his and it's like a it's very s a slow roll of intensity. It definitely gets more and more intense as it goes on. As the reality dawns on them that the whole place is got this like strange basement and that this has been repeating mm -hmm. over years and years and decades of ritualistic activity around like this strange idol, very alien creature idol thing and by the end of it he like makes it to that hotel and into that basement mm -hmm. and a portal is opening like <laughs> a ritual's placed portals? and a portal's opened and the girl comes through the girl like shows up oh. but he goes through uh crap so they swap places yeah so there's only eight episodes and it's 2022 so it came out last year, but there's definitely this... Uh, the hotel's called the Visser Hotel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's this whole interesting alien... It's almost... 
it's like it's horror sci-fi mm-hmm. you don't think it's going to be that at first but that's really honestly what i think it you would quantify it as as it does have the alien in it okay. so it's an alternative version of what we would classically it's along the alien vein and then another show i watched is called Half Bad, The Bastard Son, and The Devil Himself. I really fucking like this show. I think it was really good. It's more magical thriller Mm -hmm. because it has a lot of magic in it, which is very interesting. And it's horror? Yeah, it's, it's really dark. It has more magic than it does have horror, but it definitely has that bit of aspect to it because one of the main characters in it has this power that basically like disassembles the human body like they like it raises them into midair and just like separates them out like so a he's fucking vecna. diagram more like a girl she's vecna ah he is the son of this character who was renowned to be a killer he was referred to as the wolf the villain is marcus edge he is this they have a special kind of blood he had a special kind of blood where if he killed someone and ate their heart he would gain their powers oh yeah so he became real powerful real fast because he found out that some information about the fact that his wife was set up and he was set up but then he went into hiding but the main character that you interact with is nathan and nathan is his son Mm -hmm. and he is constantly being monitored his whole life every month or so people come to his home to test whether he can hear their heartbeat and all this kind of stuff because they're afraid he's going to turn out like his dad wow. shocker he turns does, out like yeah. his dad uh-huh. but he doesn't he doesn't kill he just has the same potential as his dad right and eventually once he can hear heartbeats and once he like officially you'd say his power activated he's taken off to be trained to handle his power even though he has no like physical power it's just the fact that he can hear heartbeats and if he killed someone he'd gain their power like that's it and he becomes friends with this girl named Annalise who's father is this like bigwig in their society and unfortunately she has this really bad power this really intense power like nothing simple like his the dad can do fucking plants and she can disassemble a human body in midair. She can just fucking take them apart. You know, that's that's like working with plants. Yeah. But there's also this big looming prophecy also that's been going on that the like the son, the, the like, you know, the child of the wolf will kill him and all this kind of shit. There's this big prophecy. So they're all assuming that Nathan one day will kill his father. Yeah. Big assumptions. Mm -hmm. They end up meeting Gabriel later, who's the person that they have to get in contact with to try to escape because people are after him. That society of witches. It's basically like a society of witches who all have powers, including Nathan's own sister who hates him and torments him because now her powers came in and guess what they are? The ability to shapeshift. That's pretty dope, though. So guess what the first thing she does? She shapeshifts into their mom and tells Nathan, I hate you and I wish you were never born. That's really messed up. So yeah, you know, she hates him. That's really messed up. She hates him. Well, I hate her. And so she joins the military force to fucking kill him. Oh. So yeah. Wow. There's all that. Well. Gabriel, our beautiful gay boy, who's flamboyant as fuck. Mm -hmm. Gay rep. Yeah. He... Is their guy Happy Pride Month, y'all. Oh, yeah. Happy Pride Month. Well, not by the time this is coming out. Just kidding. Yeah. Definitely. Gabriel kind of becomes the, like, their adult guide through all their shit. He kind of sticks with them. Yeah. And so this is reminding me very much of... There's always that trio. It's two guys and the girl, the main hero, like Harry, Ron, and Hermione, or... Percy, Annabelle, and Grover. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Except Hermione and Annabelle can rip a person into pieces yeah. by them floating him there. And Grover and Ron are gay. <laughs> And magical. Yeah. Well, Ron is magical. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And I'm sure if Hermione wanted to, she could do that with a wave oh, of her yeah. wand. She would know the spell. Oh, yeah. If um, anyone knew the spell, it would be her. But it's later revealed yes. that apparently you can have the power to hear heartbeats and to kill people to gain powers, but you can also just kill people to gain powers. So the dad of the of, of Annabelle, uh, Soul. Annalise. Annalise. Yes. So apologies. Mixing franchises yes sorry annalise her father goes on a killing spree 
and starts consuming hearts. And he goes fucking wild. Mm. Like batshit wild to try to find Nathan to kill him. Why couldn't he just stick with the plants you know plants are nice you remember ivy well when you from, when you, uh from a uh, sky high right well, when you find ivy. out that your daughter is hanging out with the son of the villain okay there's a problem or the villain that you created because in reality the whole big event that occurred in marcus's who's considered the wolf the villain marcus was going to that big magical community to make a deal with them to like be like yo you're chill i chill kind of stuff yes but they betrayed him by killing off the wife <gasps> in the okay. middle of nothing that makes sense and he realized this and when he went to the meeting he killed everybody but he but soul hid in like a closet essentially yeah which is why he survived yeah and marcus fled essentially and he slowly over the course of the show marcus is the the character of marcus is going through and killing off members of this higher society higher arc of people because they're the people that betrayed him. And towards the end, after Soul has this like mental break and starts t to kill people and consume their powers, it eventually gets to a point where he loses his mind kind of. And Nathan finally kind of attempts to confront him, but instead is able to meet his father, Marcus. And he tells him this story. Nathan thinks Marcus is there to kill him, mm -hmm. but he's not. He's like, this is your birthday. So I'm going to give you your gifts because you get gifts on your birthday that help bring out your powers to full. Hmm. And so they're in this like mist that he created in a protective place. And he explains to him, you know, there was a man that I had met that was the bravest man I'd ever known that I had killed. Basically, he had killed this man. And it's because um, he wasn't scared of death because he could see his own death. He knew his when he was going to die. So he wasn't afraid when it when it came to it. He mm. knew it was going to happen. And when he ate his heart, he found that out. Wow. Also, that same man was the man that was with the mother originally. Crazy. And for the fact that the mother then ended up being like, I know you just murdered the guy I was with, but I'm going to still date you anyway. Wow. And then have two kids with you. You know. But Nathan gets his gifts and he tries to be like, well, how do you know? He attempts to like put a knife up to his dad. He's like, I know that I'm not going to die today. But someone out there needs to. Ooh. And he leaves him his knife. And then Nathan goes out to try to find Soul as he's in this like wacko mental break. But in the end, because Nathan can't go through with it, Annalise uses her powers. And rips him apart. And rips her own father to pieces. Oh my gosh. Like separates his body into pieces. Damn. And it's the prophecies fulfilled because it was the child of the wolf. Mm. Mm -hmm. The child of this, you know, evil being. Yeah. So it was like, it wasn't even about Nathan. It was about... Annalise. So. And her father. And then, of course, obviously, then it, it shows you a scene of them being all like, we're friends and we're all here together. And then, you know, obviously it's like, oh, and there's a heart right there filled with a shit ton of powers. Hmm. So obviously some heart eating happened. It didn't happen on screen, but yeah. Yikes. There's definitely, that was, that's a good one to watch. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that one. The story's really fun. I'm reading here that it got good reviews, but it's, it got canceled. Yeah. There's only the one season. I mean, it ends in a good place. Okay. So there's no like, it's not like you wouldn't know that it got canceled. Okay. Because it also says that it was based off of like a trilogy half bad trilogy so. you could probably go and read I, it's probably a book so i'm yeah. assuming mm -hmm. so you could go read more of it if you wanted to but the show itself starts and ends comfortably okay so that's like the best part is that it doesn't feel like something was left off it feels like it had an ending yeah and to go for the final show that i definitely know that you haven't watched that i technically haven't even finished watching yet oh. it's called slasher right and it's, oh you told me about this when yesterday we were talking about um yeah yeah. Um, so technically, I know that I haven't finished watching it, but it's three different stories. So there's three different seasons, but they're their own three separate stories. Mm -hmm. Each eight episodes, but with the similar, if not same group of cast yeah. in it but aside from that so there's three seasons yeah, well there's more there's it shows when you look it up that there's more seasons so i don't know if they're yeah, so slowly being five. transitioned over you know what i mean mm -hmm. but on netflix right now there are only three okay cool. so the first season is called the executioner mm -hmm. and it follows this story of a woman who moves back into 
the house that her parents were murdered in and that she was cut out of her own mother's womb in. I think you told me about this. Yeah. And it's really intense. The You did tell I me did about tell this. I did tell you about this. The you story did. I get I got real irritated in the first episode because she was just doing dumb shit. Because she was like, there's a scene where there's a character called Sarah Bennett and Dylan Bennett. Mm -hmm. Sarah and Dylan. Sarah is the girl that got cut out of the womb and she moved back into her old house. Which, why would you ever do that? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I would never... Move back into the house that your parents were murdered in is not cool. No, I'm really okay. And it later goes to a scene where she's already been dealing with some shit in the first episode, but she is like out walking to a friend's house and the husband comes home and there's like a nosy ass neighbor and the nosy neighbor comes up and is like, your wife's not home you need to keep a leash on her and the husband opens the front door and then closes it but doesn't fucking lock it and leaves yet and i'm like you know the for a fact that the fucking neighbor goes the f inside their unlocked fucking house i think we've already learned to go from snoop. annabelle um from just annabelle yeah. that you should always lock your door because sarah found a tape that revealed that her mom and dad were fucking filming some porn what like sneaky hidden of the mom sleeping with other people and other people's and one of them was the neighbor's husband oh my god and this was sarah's mom yeah okay and the neighbor came in and stole the tape that was of her husband only to then have the executioner character come and cut off her hands and feet oh my god while the and but here's the thing while that's going on the wife ends up coming back home Mm -hmm. goes inside and watches is watching a scary movie and as the neighbor is being cut apart and she's screaming the tv is screaming and the, the wife pauses the tv can hear the screaming and you know what she decides to fucking do she decides to get her happy little ass up off the couch open the front door leave it wide the fuck open and go check out what the fuck is happening at her neighbor's house no i'd call the police i'd stay inside i'd have my doors locked and i'd say hey there's some screaming coming from my neighbors handle that please thank you oh but it get it gets fucking worse it gets worse because she gets to the neighbor's house knocks on the door and is like hey yo is everything okay and then just very very like quietly from the other side of the door the door just unlocks and she's like yeah bye oh, chill. i'm just gonna go inside your house now to no. go check on you goodbye if there's like, no response after i just heard screaming and all i hear is the door unlock you don't go inside first of all i wouldn't even be over there second you don't go inside you don't go inside but she went inside like a dumbass that's because and went upstairs, if there's, upstairs and found the fucking body like if there's one denominator all of, out of all horror it's dumb bitch syndrome yes dumb bitch syndrome is so and it got me so angry because i was at 10 minutes and i was like the fuck are you doing i was at 10 minutes left of the episode of episode one and i was like why are you like this right why i was so mad for what purpose because i'm like you have no self-preservation at all at all all and as the course of the fucking no because you know what she's probably thinking she's like yeah i survived getting cut out of my mom's womb so So, you know what fuck ever so you know what i am i am eternal and i am untouchable (laughs) and i am god so i'm going to go to my neighbor's house and open the door after i just heard screaming yeah yeah yep 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 yeah and like with every episode someone new dies yeah someone new dies so don't root for anyone because it's connected in to the bullshit of whatever apparently like each person it's a different sin that Uh, they're committing gotcha is there like it's like the seven deadly sins or whatever kind of Uh, and there's eight episodes so you can kind of figure out where that goes it's kind of like that obviously the the neighbor the way she got cut up was because of theft Ah. but yeah it's thou shall not steal each person after that is a different sin Mm -hmm. and then it's later revealed that the original guy who killed her parents and that cut her out of the womb was the original executor. Mm -hmm. This is the only death he ever committed, murders he committed. He was sent to jail. Yeah. The girl, Sarah, goes to him and speaks with him and turns him into a confidant. Dumb. And then it's revealed 
he's actually her dad. You know, I was literally going to say that. You're like the original guy, the executioner. Because he was one of the videotapes. Her dad. Yeah. And he was actually in love with the mom. Yeah. But the mom was already with the other fucking dude. Mm. And he felt betrayed. And when he found out she was pregnant and knew it was his, Uh, he snapped. He nuts. But apparently, I guess, even after she figured out this information, she like cared. And he loves her no he had her hair dna tested that's creepy so that he could make sure that that was actually correct i'm sorry um no it's giving sarah is also a psychopath but it's crazy because by the end of the show guess what guess guess who the new executioner is sarah nope her husband nope her husband's the reason why she's moved back there because her husband was obsessed with the original executioner murders what? and he's also a news journalist so i need you a know. husband at that point um but uh her and the best friend who lives there is a, the cop that lives in that town right. and he basically it's it's assumed throughout the show that like oh eventually she's gonna cheat and be with him instead and like all this kind of shit but you know he ends up being the new executioner instead oh the cop friend because the original because when the cop friend was a kid he killed his own mom Mm. by pushing her down a flight of stairs and had Ah. no remorse or regret or emotions about it there it is so when that's all cops right he came (laughs) I'm kidding. We don't need to get political around here. When he came, when it finally was like revealed because the second to last murder, which it was supposed to be her, she was supposed to die. But he also kidnapped the father because he was being transferred. Mm -hmm. And the dad was like, kill me instead. Don't kill her, please. I love her. I need her to be safe. What kind of you know it's just you know that like oh my god like what's it called what's it called what's it called um uh uh, redemption arc what kind of twisted redemption arc yes Yes. is that no redemption for him he's a murderer no yes but you do feel redemptive a little bit for him you do feel a little bit when you're watching it a little bit you really do need to watch it because right now it's sounding like no so he dies instead but then the friend the new executioner still attempts to come to kill her Anyway, why? Because he's got this men- messed up mentality towards it. Okay. But you want to know what happens instead? Is she mercs the shit out of him with the <laughs> assistance of her her husband, her hubby. He like comes down the stairs and sees that like she's she's like I'm gonna kill him, and he's like I'll hold him down. Wow. So like you know what? See, Never what mind. Ride say? or die. What did I fucking say? I literally said it's giving daughter of a psychopath becomes psychopath yes and her husband's in on it bonnie and clyde but yeah honestly that first season i would have to say right now i like it more i haven't finished i've got two episodes left of the third season but i like it more than the other the next one which is guilty party Mm -hmm. it is a group of fucking teenagers or was a group of teenagers who also are now like adults now. Yeah. Who all were camp counselors and they all caused the death of one of the camp counselor girls and hit it. When they were young? Mm-hmm. For five years they hit it. Wow. And they decided one winter they were going to go up to try to find the body to bury it. After someone had already gone to jail for it. Ah. And been marked as it. Because they set it up that way. Damn. Oh, yeah. It's chaos. And there's this whole, like... They really frame someone? Cult. Not cult. I would not call them cult. A group of people, commune kind of style, kind of living, where they are like, we're calm, we're peaceful, we're vegan, we're trying to just, like, escape the chaos. Murdered somebody and then framed it on someone else. And the teens all go to stay at this, like, cabin. And then people start dying. One after another, after another, after another, people start dying. And mainly it's all of the teens. A lot of the teens start go like the, the, the you know, grown up teenagers all Let start dying. Let me guess. It's the girl back from the dead. Nope. Because her skeleton is very clearly hung up in one of the scenes. So oh. clearly she's dead dead. Okay. Um, Because they, they made sure she was dead. Wow. Hold on. What did she do to deserve death? So here's what she did. Okay. When they were camp counselors, right. she made friends with all of them. Yeah. And it's she... Tr- <sighs> Tricked one of the guys into thinking that she liked him, but really she was using him so that she could get off of doing work. Ah, boo. One guy. It's not what the patriarchy does to you. 
It's what the patriarchy does for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the other guy, she fucked him yeah. when he was with some with one of the others. Uh, one of the girls never really fell for her bullshit, but like definitely still gave too much. Yeah. And then one was her best friend and revealed some dark shit about the fact that she slept with her stepfather. Oh, geez. To show that to her mother that he was not good. Okay, listen. They it, killed yeah. her for that? They killed her for that. Because they didn't kill her for that. They killed, they they wanted to be like, yo, we want you to be remorseful. So we're going to set you up in this situation where you're, we're going to like leave you. We're going to judge you. We're going to tell you like, it's really fucked up that you pulled all this shit yeah. with every one of us. And Valid. it's fucked up. It's not cool. We're going to leave you out in the middle of the woods. You can walk back sort of situation. Yeah. But she revealed that she's like, I have dirt on all of you and I will fucking out every single one of you. So she blackmailed them? What actually happened oh, shit. is they decided to back down. But she said something to the one, um, I believe his name was Brian and, oh, Noah. His name was Noah. The character was named Noah. Noah was the one that she was just taking advantage of. Mm. She said the wrong thing to him and then he attempted to assault her. Oh. And she took off running in a scared panic, which made perfect fucking sense because, yeah. Yeah. And so she booked it and she fell wrong. Mm rolled down a hill and her neck inside of her face smacked against a stump and they thought she was dead so they were gonna pick her up and bury her out in the woods jesus but she wasn't fucking dead oh my god she fucking woke up while they were trying to bury her while they were they they were trying to like secure a little location so they had her sitting up over here and she fucking woke up screaming and obviously in horrific pain yeah but you know and some of them were like, I don't want to do this. I can't go through with this. I can't deal with this. Yeah. Our our main girl, Dawn, fucking was ruthless and was like, no, we have to get rid of her or else she's going to the cops. Oh, my God. And I so... hope Dawn died a tragic death. Nope. Yeah, of course. The last of them um, took turns smashing in her face. Oh, my God. Because one smashed her face and she was still alive. So another one smashed her face and she was still alive. And so the last one smashed her face and she was still alive. So he smashed her face one more time. Oh my God. So it's dark. That is. And then they kept it hidden for five years. No, that's very dark. And I get that she did a lot of things that were not the best, but that's n not how somebody deserves to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For any reason like that. That's a lot. That's really dark. It led to this whole trickle down where now that they're back to this place, people start dying. They're dying in different ways, yeah. in horrific ways. And it is later revealed that a couple of the members of this like peaceful group, one of them is an escaped convict <laughs> who does absolutely horrendous shit to Noah, like super assaults him Ooh, like in oh, the mm. worst ways possible, like kidnaps him and super assaults him. Wow. So I guess trigger warning if you're going to watch this. Yeah. Super trigger warning. Extreme trigger warning. Like extreme trigger warning. Okay. It's really good kind of graphic okay in that regard because you don't find out that he attempted to assault the original girl until after mm. that assault happens so at first you pity him got you but then you're like okay he well, kind of maybe got what what was coming yeah he got a taste of his own medicine before you know he, he was set on fire and burned alive wow you know Oh, but he didn't die immediately. He survived, but just was like a horrific, in pain, burned mess. Oh, my God. Till he eventually succumbed to the fact that his that he was dying. <laughs> you know, real dark. A lot of the deaths are real gory, real dark, real fucked up. And the only person who attempted or would want wanted to confess to everything was Peter. He's the one guy who fucked the original girl, mm -hmm. but regretted the whole situation and actually wrote like a confession letter Aww. um but he was also the last of the friends the last of the people to die uh so they all died not everybody died okay only two people survived don't tell me three people survived i'll watch out I'll watch. maybe <laughs> this sounds really but graphic it's called slasher so it's the whole overarching series is called slasher so there's gore yeah. it's fucking gory i'm just warning you mm -hmm. it's gross but yeah it's pretty intense the main villain you do you wouldn't you don't know you don't know who the killer is. And when it finally becomes revealed, you're like, what the fuck? Okay. Like, at first you're thinking it's this other person. And then you're like, wait the fuck. It's this? Like, it's shocking. It's mm -hmm. like, oh shit mentality. Like, it's surprising it's shocking it surprised me okay so it was pretty so i'll be literally guessing everyone like the that is literally, the most you'll shocking. be guessing every character until you get to the right one and then you're still gonna be wrong because it's really this one instead oh 
So now I'm going to know. Because you're going to realize, you're going to be like, oh shit, it's this guy. Mm -hmm. It's this individual. Oh, fuck, it was this one. Mm -hmm. It's this dude over here. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, god damn it. Constantly evading you. And it also gets real creepy about it too. It's gross. Mm -hmm. It's a little gross. But So I won't, I guess I won't spoil you on that one. No. Because you want to watch it. And, and well, I want to watch all of them, but... They're not all interconnected, so technically, if you wanted to watch Guilty Party first, you could. Yeah. You could watch Guilty Party, then watch Soul, then watch it. I'll probably watch, watch it in one. order, because, like, I want to watch them. Yeah. But... And the last season is called Solstice. Yes. That's the one I'm on right now. Yeah. And the fascinating thing that I noticed that's different than the previous two is that every episode, the first episode is 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 9 p.m to 12 a.m. Those are the episodes. Oh, and it all happens in that span of time? Yes. Everything happens in that span of time. And it's, you're following this girl who... I believe is Muslim because she's got a hijab mm -hmm. and everything. And they all li like there's a shit ton of people who all live at this specific hotel, like not hotel, but like apartment complex. Mm -hmm. And it starts with like a year prior. Yeah. And you find out this character named Kit is murdered, is killed. And no one helped him. No one like he tried to ask for help. No one helped him. All this kind of stuff. And he was killed Damn. like brutally killed then a year later a bunch of different people were all from that hotel not, not hotel but that whole apartment complex people were dying oh so like all and the people who like didn't help him were dying are slowly dying honestly and it's right revealing on. and here's the thing every time that someone is revealed to have died they then explain they show you the interaction that occurred but the weird thing is is that the character the villain that's doing all of the killing wears this mask with this neon appearance and wears all black and a hood and everything mm -hmm. but there's certain characters right now that i don't quite understand why he attempted to kill because i don't feel like they had a bearing on this thing yeah which is why it confused me it could be you might find that out later because there's only two episodes left yeah so it's there's this curiosity of like but why because that one doesn't make any sense right so far everyone has some little leverage of sense in how they and why they died to some degree mm -hmm. but yeah the last episode that i was on was 3 p.m to 6 p.m so i have oh apologies i stopped at 9 p.m to 12 a.m it goes to midnight to 3 a.m. and 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So it goes from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. So, so it's a 24-hour 24 24 period. Mm -hmm. But there are eight episodes. I was on episode... I had just finished episode four. And episode four, I had to step away from. Really? Because I got a little nauseous and it was just a little much. Okay. Well... Do you want me to tell you about it? Mm -hmm. Sure. So slowly people are dying. Yeah. Obviously. And you're revealed why they're dying. In this episode, you find out that a barista, this dick barista, died. And that he had this connection to this one girl who already had like a pretty shitty pre-existing experience, but kind of had an interaction with the original guy from a year ago. They had an interaction that he saw and didn't like. And this guy, very clearly being the jealous type, was like, you're cheating on me. You're fucking this guy named, and his name, the, the original guy who died was named Kit. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like, you're fucking Kit and all this kind of stuff. Granted, this girl's ace is shit. <laughs> She's ace is shit. And this other guy, Xavier, if I'm correct, is his name, is the one who's the barista. And he's like, you're fucking this guy and you're blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, I'm only fucking you. I'm like, and you can see her. She's there's a scene of her sitting in the bed looking up stuff about like asexuality right while he is trying to go down on her that's hilarious and she is not emoting oh my god and he's like hello but yeah. she's a vr tester too she's like a vr game tester mm -hmm. and so officially she has by the end of it she's also killed but you also find out that she's kind of got a fucked up child situation that has happened where her family was like a good family environment but they i guess were on a drive and they had one of those like in-car cell phones and the grandma was calling and then they got into a car accident mm -hmm. and the parents died and she watched her mom die and there's this like video of the there's like images of this little girl crying in the car and this girl she she attempts to take her own life but can't go through with it only to then be killed and the last thing you see is her like that he placed her in the bath as if she had killed herself no because he drills a hole in her head <gasps> oh my god and that's when you had to step away and he lays the body in he put the body in the bathtub and the last scene is 
of a little of the little girl version of her covered in like blood crying as she's walking away from like a blurred wreck from the car and that's like the last thing that you see damn and i had to be like no i need a minute wow like i don't know what about it really fucking got to me but that but that episode i had to step away from Mm -hmm. so i still have to finish watching it but yeah it's intense that's a lot yeah i don't even know who the killer is yet yeah slashers get to me and we were talking about this last night they just i don't know they make me too self-aware of -hmm. my own body whereas for me it does not it's doesn't bother me as much no i i cannot (laughs) we figured out yesterday that um we have opposite things that freak yeah. us out. For me, it's that slasher kind of thing because it does make me so self-aware. And for me, it's more of the supernatural shit. Whereas that does not bother me at Because all. she started with supernatural, whereas I started with slashers. Yeah. So for me, slashers are not as bad, whereas they're really bad for her. And for me, the supernaturals get to me, but they're chiller for yeah. Lily. Paranormal things do not affect me, really. Yeah. That shit fucks me up. Mm. So... In case in point... The Exorcist. I don't look forward to it, but I will be trusting you with my soul. When we get to... All right, let's make a thing. So, yeah, let's let's make a deal. Okay. After our... Yeah, why not? 50th episode, because that's about a year. Yeah. After our 50th episode, we'll do it. We'll do the episode on The Exorcist. All right. I, I am truly terrified, but... Yeah. If you listen to our first chit chat episode, you you know all about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, fifty Shit. episodes in, we'll do it just for you guys. Well, Amber, we'll do it just for you guys. Yeah, I will do it for just for you guys, <laughs> for your entertainment value. Yeah. Personally, yeah. The Exorcist doesn't bother me. Yeah. I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> Whereas I have trauma. Yeah. Horrific trauma from it. And therefore, it's not funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're. I would feel like I think we're pretty good here. Yeah. <laughs> We've done quite a lot. We've been talking for almost a couple hours now. Yeah. Um, Thank God for editing. That'll cut that down a lot. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. If you go and watch any of these, let us know what you think. Oh, yeah. Share definitely. Some your, share some of your thoughts. Write us a comment. Your... Don't forget to review us and all that kind of shit. Yep, yep, yep. Because that's always importante. Important. We want to know your feedback. Yeah. Our next episode, which is our next movie, we're going to be... Talking about the boogeyman that just came out in June second, mm-hmm. technically. Yes, um, we watched it in theaters, and let me say the it people was real good. <laughs> also, fuck the people in the theater; they were all dick bags. <laughs> it's like after the pandemic, people just completely forgot how to act. No, here's the thing: that's not pandemic. I've been in. That's not pandemic. That's just a bunch of fucking dickhead college high school kids all and, going to go watch a you, spooky movie. And you may be right. I cannot handle those people. If you're going to go watch a movie on public, please be, be fucking respectful. respectful. Don't run. Don't talk. Don't don't like fucking shine flashlights. Don't shine your flashlight. God. The amount of flashlights that were going on during that movie and talking the running? and running in like just fucking walk. Yeah. Also, why the fuck are you getting up that many times? Yeah. If you're that scared, don't fucking watch it. Shit. And then the woman that walked out was like, "That movie wasn't even that good." All right, you could have left. You could have left. I definitely oh, heard God. you in the background speaking yeah in the most inopportune times but either way if you're gonna go watch a movie in public be respectful and that is definitely the actor in me who yeah that's the theater also theater just in general that's just so rude man it is rude but i feel like since we have that background it's definitely more (laughs) we'll have to discuss it more when we get to it but oh my god definitely are more um how do you say what's the word we're more we're theater respectful yeah we have respect for movies and theater like the work and effort took into it i don't care how scared you are you can be scared in your seat also, without being dis- disruptive people paid to be there yeah like to enjoy the movie on the big screen yeah and like, you're just being rude you're being so rude disrespectful yeah but anyway that's my two cents on that yeah well be nice yeah be kind be good person yeah even if we like horror that doesn't mean like you can scream we are you can be like people. oh shit in the yeah. moment but like through the rest of the film maybe sh- shut up and don't talk yeah and maybe also don't moments. use your cell phone and fucking use your flashlight and shit and yeah. run around the theater or climb over the fucking railing <laughs> instead of just walking past your effing friends oh my god the people next to us were driving they did crazy. that yeah they were climbing over the railing instead of just fucking walking in front of their friends oh my god god it was that's even worse just walk 
Just walk. Yeah. But seriously, just because, you know, we're horror fans doesn't mean we're horrible people. Yeah. Be nice to each other. Yeah. And with that. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Horror Unmasked. Listen to us, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes at Horror Unmasked Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Horror Unmasked Podcast. And in the meantime, will you fear or will you fear not?